good morning my dear friends today i am going to speak to you about a very interesting development happening in the geopolitical situation of our region where india is a very important player of course and like a kaleidoscope changing its figures or changing its images very fast with just a tilt the geopolitical situation the area is every day undergoing new developments were catapulting india into more prominence as a very important player and it is very soothing for us to hear now today i am going to talk to you about i2u2 a new forum which has developed and coming into prominence in the region in the last two years now to give a little background about i2u2 the name itself is very interesting uh, i of course denotes india and israel and u2 of course us and uae initially these were the basic players later us roped in saudi arabia being its main ally in this region now this was mooted two years before in the late 2021 by israel only that is a very interesting thing now israel connecting all other nations which i just mentioned came up with this idea or rather this projection uh, of growth and development in the area under the aegis of us being the big boss reason because of the phenomenal growth of china in the area you all are aware about the belt and road initiative which is a revival of silk route and revival of land routes as well as maritime routes to develop trade relations with the europe as well as middle east so now to counter them to checkmate the chinese phenomenal growth definitely something has to be done by the group which is not in favor of chinese growth of course we are very much important partner to that particular effort as you all are aware now you probably would have heard or rather read in the newspapers that yesterday our national security adviser mr ajit doval has met the nsas of other three countries that is us uae saudi in saudi arabia only and discussed the modalities and the blueprint of this particular forum now the first virtual meeting of all the heads of these nations happened in last june uh were our prime minister narendra modi also has been participating and has been a very key player now what is objective of this i2 u2 the objective is very very simple as i have told you to checkmate chinese growth and to make a via media or a via option for the countries in the middle east because middle east is a very important region for the us especially they don't want to lose the grip and control in the area now definitely they know they have to take our support in the area because we are a very major player most populated country in the world now and also a very very growing economy very fast growing economy with 5.9 is the present uh, target of growth gdp growth and the basic objective right now is to develop the area and connect these middle east countries and connect basically the western asian countries through the land and the south asian countries through maritime channels and sea routes and what is india significance in this because from the beginning itself the israelis have muted or rather suggested that india can be the major contributor for the infrastructural development and growth in the area and the whole forum intends to give the responsibility of developing complete land routes especially through railway network 
to India. Now, this is a very interesting proposal for India as such because India also have to look into three important strategic advantages by boosting this project. So let's discuss these objectives first. Now, the first objective probably would be India was caught unaware by China because Chinese made inroads and uh, overtuned uh, their diplomatic effort and become very friendly with Iran and Saudi Arabia, which was not very, uh, uh, very much in our liking as a country which is friendly towards both these Middle East countries and very important Middle East countries. China has been trying to become friendly with Iran because Iran was going through problems with Americans with, us, with all kind of sanctions and the Chinese help coming by in their growth and development and clandestinely definitely helping them to make the nuclear bombs. That was a diplomatic upset for India in fact. So India has to offset this kind of Chinese enthusiasm and Chinese adventure in the region. That is very, very clear. Also, by having connectivity with Iran and Saudi and Middle East countries through railway networks, which can be functioned very well by the expertise we have. Uh, right now, we have very good expertise in the railway network and development and fast trains which we have developed off late you all know one day bharat all these things has been really making news and we have got a technology which is very very effectively cost cost effectively good and uh, we got the expertise to connect the intercontinental even intercontinental uh, tracks we can connect we have the wherewithals and expertise we have already done in Sri Lanka, as you all are aware of. So we can even repeat the same thing, which the whole world believes so. So once we have this connectivity, then the crude oil, which coming from the area, from this Middle East, they can reach us cheaply and it could be cost effective for us for reproducing it, refining it and selling outside also. So it could be a very good uh, advantage for India if this connectivity can be established through land as well as maritime. Now that is the first strategy. Now the second strategy gentlemen is India is got a very unique responsibility of becoming a player in this region and this is a very important opportunity for India to prove that we are also could be very good like China as an infrastructural developer in the area. Now, the Chinese, as you know, they are experts in infrastructural development. Even we are sometimes dependent on their expertise and uh, technical uh, help. Certain metros, you all know, we have taken help earlier, but we are breaking out with our technology and we could be showing to the world we can showcase our expertise as a infrastructural developer in the world which also we could sell to other countries so as an effort of make in india we can really reach out to the world by this particular project as a force multiplier of our economic growth also, we would be able to tell the world that, yes, we have arrived technically and economically we have arrived. Also, this is a good opportunity for our private sector players and government players. Of course, the government companies are here, but we can also involve our private players to have appropriate projects distributed where overall growth of the region and overall growth of the private sector also can be visualized. Now, the third strategical objective, uh, ladies and gentlemen, would be, as you are all aware, last so many years, almost 75 years after 
Pakistan has severed away from us. They have been blocking the land routes of us towards the Middle East. So we had an issue. We were handicapped through the land for any development across our lands. So we have to depend on naval routes. So if this project comes through, definitely with the help of US and other countries who are all would be, be keen to come up in one establishment and do this project, we will be able to establish very strong naval routes towards Middle East and further ahead also, which will also help our all around trade routes and all our around trade relationships with other countries. And also you all are aware the CPEC, China Pakistan Economic Corridor, which has gone through our POK disputed area, which we are not very happy about. And uh, we have a stake and China has been infuriating us by not even checking with us or going through this project of CPEC in a very arbitrary manner. This is also is a eyesore for us. So by developing alternative ports as well as alternative naval routes, we will be able to checkmate the CPEC also. And you all are aware all the countries around China as well as in the Middle East, people are scared. I mean, in the nations are actually scared of China because they have a policy of debt trapping the other nations. Many countries, especially you, the examples are in front of us, Sri Lanka, debt trapped. Look at Pakistan, going to get, get trapped. Look at Solomon Islands near Japan, totally debt trapped to China. So what is China doing? China is giving them soft loans in the pretext of developing the area and they know very well that they are not able to pay it back because the politicians are very corrupt as it is. They would have been swallowed the complete money and they will start gobbling that land and make them slaves in the area. And all nations are aware of it, but they are helpless. So by providing another alternative to all these nations around, I feel and definitely all the geopolitical experts feel that we can checkmate the situation with the help of like-minded other nations. So ladies and gentlemen, you all need to look up and look ahead and see what is going to happen. And I'm sure if this project gets shape or gets starting, it is definitely going to boost up the position of India as a global player, especially in this area. And it also will help us to some extent come out from the clutches of Russia as a major contributor of crude oil right now and as well as defense products. So this is a very important opportunity for India to come up and shine as we all would expect. Let's look ahead and wait for what is going to happen next. I'll come back. Good day. <laughs>